For the last couple of years, flight controllers have been getting more and more expensive. This has predominantly been due to the chip shortage and the supply issues around the STM32 series. Whether that be the STM32 F4 or the F7 or even the H series, this has resulted in flight controllers and flight stacks getting more and more expensive, with it now almost becoming the norm for a complete flight stack to come in at well over $100 or £100. However, there is a little bit of good news around the corner, and this isn't the fact that the world is calming down and supply is improving, it is the fact that there is a new player in the market, and we're starting to see new flight controllers arrive with a new chip that we have not seen before. Now, just to give you some background on this, pretty much every flight controller we use today is based on the STM series of chipsets. That is, an STM32 based on either the F1, F4, F7 or H7 chipset series. The commonality between all of these chips is A, that they are made by ST Microelectronics and B, they're all based on the ARM cores that ST have been using. Now there are different ARM cores out there. You've got the M4s which we've been traditionally using in the F4 series and there are the new faster cores available in the F7s or even the dual cores in the H7s but they all share the same lineage of being ARM based all made by ST Microelectronics. It isn't the case though that we have always used flight controllers based on these and whilst all of these here you can see do have STM chipsets and that includes the likes of the Cube Autopilot today. There have been autopilots in the past using other chips including this, the Micro Vector, which was actually PIC based. However, everything we're using today is based off the STM32 and with the chip shortage that we've had over the last few years, the lack of fab capacity, human malware, as well as the frankly crazy situation going on in the world, what we've seen is silicon prices increased dramatically and that has had an effect on the price end users pay for flight controllers. However, things are now changing and there is a new player on the scene called Arteritech. They have released their own versions of the likes of the STM32, which are still based off ARM cores. They are largely very similar to the STM32 series, but they are much cheaper to buy. Now over the years there have been many copies of the ARM chipset. Some of these designed to look the same as the original to deceive users into thinking they're buying a genuine chipset when they're not and others simply not bothering just trying to sell it as cheap as possible. Many of these though have had issues and whilst they may be dropping replacements they don't work or function as intended or at least as well as the STM32 equivalent. However, things with their Terry Tech are slightly different. They are a genuine ARM licensee and as a result they are making their own genuine chipsets that are equivalent to the STM series. They are designed in many cases to be drop-in replacements, however they are not spec for spec the same and actually they may offer some improvements over their STM32 equivalent. Now the chip we're starting to see appear in some flight controllers is the AT32F435. If we take a look at this on a comparison chart compared to some of the STM32 common models, you can see that it does sit third in this line. We have the STM32F411, which runs at 100 megahertz, the STM32F405 that runs 168 megahertz, and then the STM32F722 that runs at 216. What's interesting is where the Arteri chipset sits and if you look at the AT32F435 it sits between the 405 and the 722 running at 288 MHz, 1 mega flash and in fact has more overall I.O. The real interesting thing is whilst it is still based off the same M4 core CPU that is based on the ARM design, it does run substantially faster and in some CPU benchmarks it is very comparable in performance to the larger M7 core in the 7 series of ARM chipsets. This will be largely because of the increased clock speed the chip has but also the increased RAM over the M4 equivalents. 
Now, what's rather interesting about this Arteri chipset is not just the fact that it is faster than its F4 equivalents and is almost as fast as the F7s, it's the price, because this chipset is coming in cheaper than many of the bottom-end STM32F4 models. You can see on this chart here again, I show the pricing, and it is the cheapest chip on the list, and this is going to directly result in the cost of flight controllers coming down. Now, whilst the SOC isn't the only component on a flight controller, it will be a large part of the overall BOM cost, and we will see a potential substantial reduction with manufacturers using this chipset. Now, this chipset has started to appear on flight controllers coming out of China, with the first being Neutron RC, selling a full AO with this chipset on board for under $40. However, it's likely we will see a lot more over the next few weeks and months. It isn't though actually fully supported today in beat the flight, but it will be supported in version 4.5, and it's likely you're gonna see the same thing happen with the other flight stacks as well moving forward. Over the next 12 months, I suspect you will see a lot more manufacturers get on board and pretty much everyone offer at least one controller with this new chipset available. It really is going to be interesting to see how it actually performs. It offers a huge amount of benefits to the end user in regards to cost. It fixes some of the DMA issues that we've had in the likes of the STM32 chipsets as well. And with another manufacturer out there pushing ST, hopefully it will help drive down prices overall and then we will see the likes of STMs and these new chipsets be available for users at a reasonable price. So that's pretty much it from me on this one. I am going to order in one of these flight controllers and I'll be doing a video about that in the future. And if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Furthermore, I just want to say if you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comment section and please do give it a like as well. Furthermore, I'd just like to say if you have found this content helpful, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buying me a coffee in the description. It's only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you think we've earned your support today, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you from me to all of my patrons. Again, I would not be able to do this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Please do let me know what you think in the comment section. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.